Hello and welcome to another episode of Deep Program with Carrie Smith. I'm your host, Carrie. Uh, today we have a pretty exciting, interesting episode uh, for Texans and not just for Texans, I think for people all across the U.S. who are keeping an eye on uh, some of the developing news out of school boards and some of the controversies in the in the news regarding school board elections. Uh, my guests today are on the board of directors for the new uh, Grapevine Colleyville Scholars Journal. Uh, so please welcome Zarian Stark and Joel Lua. Hello, guys. Hey, it's good to be here. I wanted to have you on today. First of all, I've been listening to you this NBC News, I believe it is, a podcast called Grapevine. And it's pretty incredible to me that a little school district in Texas is the focus of such a like large, it seems large amount of attention from the national news. Can you just start by telling me what is that like? Um, I'm not sure exactly what the, what the effect of this one is going to be like uh, by the end of the year or Begin, uh, beginning next year. Um, my guess is that they kind of wanted this to stretch up until uh, the primary uh, next year, just because the one they did on South Lake was sort of stretched from the fall all the way up to the spring when it was election time. Um, it hasn't been getting the reception that they probably hoped it was getting. Um, and so we'll see. Uh, just on the broader point, um, I mean, I'm honestly, I'm, I'm waiting for NBC to do a similar deep dive on the Democrat moms and Muslim moms in Virginia who also oppose their school boards because of similar um, similar things that are going on uh, in, in their, or at the very least similar fears that are going on in their, in their school boards and ended up voting for a Republican governor in 2020. Or um, the, the Muslim moms in Dearborn, Michigan who, and, and Muslim parents in Dearborn, Michigan who are, you know, sending up to, against the same thing. Um, or or even do an expose on on leftist teachers on, on the coastal cities who've completely transformed their school districts to sort of match their ideology um, over the past decades, right? And so stuff like this happens all the time, right? Uh, people who live in communities, they get together, they decide that their community believes in certain things and they don't believe in certain things and they would like their kids uh, who are being taught in the school where everyone else's kids go to, at the very least, either have a neutral view or be taught the values of that community. This happens all across the country. And, you know, as campaigns go, uh, people, small business owners and people who are well to do and people who don't have much money decide that this is a worth enough, a, a worth enough project to put money into these school board elections to get people elected who mirror their values. And so, you know, this is happening all over the country. Uh, for some reason, I, I, I have my guesses, but NBZ has chosen Northeast uh, Tarrant County to put their focus on uh, because um, there are certain changes happening societally uh, that they don't, they don't uh, seem to like. Um, at the same yeah. time, there are, other, there are other changes happening across, around the country that they do seem to like, but we don't get exposes on those ones or the danger yes. or, or benefits of those areas. It's all just uh, the conservative uh, region of DFW. That's that where the focus is. So, uh, yeah. For anyone who may be watching or listening and is not familiar with this podcast, um, it definitely takes a, a very uh, specific view in, in trying to tie a lot of the changes at school board elections across the country, not just in Grapevine Colleyville, to um, I think in their words, you know, Christian nationalism or it, some kind of extreme Christianity. And so I hear your point about why aren't they covering, you know, it's not just Christian parents who yeah. are, are, are interested in their child's education. And so it's a pretty narrow view, I think, to, to try and paint it as that. Um, well, let's back up. So, so as I mentioned at the beginning, you guys are both on the board of directors for the Grapevine Colleyville Scholars Journal. Is that a new organization? Yep. We established earlier this year, and we issued our first newspaper about just about a month ago, I believe. We went out to about 35,000 households. We have an 85,000 readership that hits almost every household within Grapevine, Colleyville, and parts of Ulysses. And it's called GCISD News, is that right? Correct. That's that's going to eighty five thousand families. Thirty five thousand households with a readership of eighty five thousand. That's amazing. Yeah. So is that, is that 
school board and, and about this, but are there other school boards who are, who are putting up news about, hey, this is what's going on, we're going to be transparent and show you our things? Um, to my knowledge, I don't think JCSD is the, the JCSD school board is the only one as far as transparency. Um, uh, we've there there's some great folks over in Keller uh, who are doing some phenomenal things. Uh, South Lake has, in my opinion, has sort of been leading the um, or spearheading this effort in the past years, and I'd say the results that they've gotten is pretty is pretty good. Um, as far as on the newspaper paper, and I, I think you broke up a little bit, so I don't. I don't I may, I may not have gotten the entire question, but as far as just on the newspaper, and I think we're the only one that's like a local school board specific newspaper at, at the very least in the in the uh, past few years. And yeah, our focus is really, you know, the goods and bads of our school board. Um, and in our opinion, it's mostly good. And letting parents know that this is the result of you voting the way you do. Um, and also letting school board members know that you're, you've been elected by, by people who value certain things, right? And, you know, they want to make sure that the things that they value, and, uh, at the very least, what you promise you will do, both as far as how, they're, how their kids are taught, uh, which values are being taught in the classrooms, but also fiscally, um, because you call, you call yourselves conservatives, right? And so taxpayers want to make sure that their hard-earned tax, tax dollars are being, you know, being taken good care of. Um, so you've made all those promises, keep up with them, so long as you're keeping up with them and, and you know, fulfilling your promises, we'll, let, we'll do our best to let the parents know. Uh, where you fall short, we'll do our best to let the parents know. But ultimately, we hope that our goal, which is the the, benef the yeah the benefits of the kids in the school in the school district, uh, is the same with the with the school board, regardless of what title the school board is given, whether it's majority or whatever other non nonsensical thing. Then you know they're a school board as a whole. Uh, they're putting there to, to get certain things done, and and those things are reflected both in the promises that they make and also the values of the community. So. Mm -hmm. So. Is the Grapevine Scholars Journal and, and GCIC News, are you guys affiliated with the school board? No. No, no, we're not. And so are you are you volunteers? Is this a paid position? How did you come to be? Well, you know, all of us have our unique stories. Uh, for me, uh, I graduated from Colleyville Heritage. I got a two-year-old daughter, and I'm hoping one day she'll also go to GCISD. And I figured, you know, this is now the time to get involved. I mean, what's happening in our schools, it feels like a whole lot different experience than what happened like back in 09 when I graduated. And so I believe Joel, Bob, we have our similar reasons because we got our own family members who are also going in GCISD. And we figured create the creation of this newspaper should spell out the highlights of what's going on but other areas where we can improve as well. Yeah, for me, um, I, I live in GCSD. I don't have any kids yet, uh, my wife and I, but we're planning on having kids soon. And so, you know, this is important to me. Um, both what I do professionally, I've, I've worked on multiple um, various campaigns in the past. Um, and so I have a certain expertise as far as, you know, just getting the post of, of the area where I live. Um, I, thought what what would be more useful than you know having that sort of impact or at the very least by uh, putting my time in the area where I live uh, in the schools where I, where I hope to put my put my kids one day um, as far as our affiliation no we're not we're not affiliated with the with the school board uh, you know the same with Dallas morning news isn't put out by the Dallas school uh, school, uh, city council right um, it, it's a name because you know we're in G in uh, the GCIC school district and the things that we talked about we talk about as boring as it may be are exclusively concerns of uh, the GCIC um, school board and so you know we won't be talking about other news that pertain to other uh, other areas um, even if it's, it may be a bit more exciting sometimes so yeah so you are a parent and hopefully you, you hope to be a parent one day who are interested in the quality of schools. Can you tell me, I think a lot of the, the cultural, I guess you'd say the culture war that's been, that's been brewing and is currently raging in the country over schools has to do with uh, differences of opinion on the purposes, the purpose of education. Can each of you speak a little bit as a parent and as someone who would like to be a parent about what do you think is the purpose of education? 
So I'll give you a little background on my life. So my family immigrated from India back in the 70s. Okay. And I didn't come from privilege and say that my family had a high school education or went to college. So for me or for them is in order to get out of poverty is you need to get educated. And when I think of our school districts today, people are thinking about, hey, who has the highest test scores? Where can I send my kids so they could get, end this cycle of poverty? So I don't know anything about culture wars. I just know that GCISD was the place where my mom chose to send me so I could get my first high school diploma in our family. Wow. I think what Zirin says there is pretty striking. Um, and so, so it's so, so important because, yeah, sure, you know, there, there is a quote, quote unquote uh, culture war. Uh, for me, if, if you are part of the, the, the cohort of people coming through and sort of upending centuries of norms, right? Centuries of human norms as far as whether it may be sexuality or, or, um, or decades of, of American norms as far as the race, relationship between different races, um, going back to MLK and, and the 90s and the early 2000s, or whatever other things may be coming up. If you're part of the people who are saying, you know, this needs to be done away with and something new needs to be, needs to be brought in, now, whether you think your values are, are correct or not, whether you think you're in the right or not, that's, that's a different question. But by definition, you are the cultural warrior, right? Everyone else saying that, everyone else saying no is really just, you know, the pushback. You are the person trying to, you know, bring bring change and change the way things have been and change the way I would say 90% of the country and 99% of the world, um, you know, what they're more, what they're most comfortable with and also just just basic biology and and, and stuff like that. So those are a bun bunch of the issues that are, that are going on across the country. Uh, school boards tend to come into, into play because especially during 2020, Parents finally got to see a lot of the things that their kids were being taught. And again, like, I'm, like I was saying earlier, right, like the public schools, if there are certain things you want your kids to be taught and there are certain things you're OK with your kids being taught, um, then send them to the private school where you know what the principal wants the, the teachers to teach, teach their classes. And, you know, teachers have have more sway in those areas. But if you send your kids where everyone else's kids get to go or have to go, then at the very least, uh, the curriculum is going to be neutral on controversial issues that parents would prefer to have to teach, to be the ones to teach their kids. Um, and, you know, sure, school should be a place where, a place that's, that's challenging. But honestly, for the most part, I'd say that's, that's meant for university, right? There, there are certain things that you're, meant, that you're supposed to be teaching, basic level things you're supposed to be teaching in kids from, from pre-K up to 12th grade. And because those are public institutions and we're talking about people who aren't adults yet um mm -hmm. and as far as the culture word that's sort of what i see what i see right there are certain issues that have cropped up over the past decade decade and a half if you want to go across the entire country and it's becoming more and more uh pervasive in, in certain schools and for lack of a better word there are people whose personal values and personal beliefs sort of buck against these these changing tr uh, trends um and i think one of the big mistakes that people often make is sort of pretend that this is only um right wing versus left wing or more specifically yeah. white right wing versus um yeah. versus everyone else right whereas if you look at the black community they largely disagree with most of this stuff if you look at uh great van Collierville, for example right lots of southeast asians in our community um again do a poll like do a poll and if you and if the poll comes out where let's say a plurality of the of the Southeast Asians in Great Brown Colleyville like these new tr uh, social trends, or at the very least, they want their kids um, under, we'll even say seniors, right? We'll say 12th grade and under. They want their kids to be taught that. If, if you can get a plurality of those of those parents to say that, I will personally pay for the poll. You will not get that. And that's in our community. Uh, much less, you know, talking about other 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 communities, religious groups, right? You're 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 in Texas. We've got loads of different religions all across the state. Loads of different religious groups. They largely oppose these uh, oppose these things. And we're talking about Buddhists. We're talking about Hindus, right? We're talking about 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 Christians. Not all these people are white evangelical Christians. They all oppose this thing. And so, acting as if it's only the white evangelical Christians who oppose this, it's very lazy. Uh, for lack of uh, to, to be to be kind, um, it's a very lazy approach to something that's going on. That it's a small group of people who are sort of pushing it. The larger majority of people don't like it, and then a a 
equally small group of people are being vocal about it, right? And so we're all acting as if it's it's this easy cut and dry left versus right, white versus everyone else when that's not the case at all. Um, and so, you know, I, I think our, our job and I, I'll, I'll stop filibustering, uh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Sarin, but I, I think our job as a, as a as a newspaper is really to highlight that, right? Like mm -hmm. we are a far more diverse community than people would give us credit for, which is silly because if you look at the, the median, um, the median salary in, or even where the demographic breakdown, right? Like it's so, so obvious, just walk around, go to Tom Thumb, go to Walmart, you will see just how incredibly diverse this community is. And we're far more diverse than people give us credit. Um, and so, what this newspaper is meant to do is what are the things that all of us agree on as far as how we want our kids to be taught? And I promise you the stuff that, that, that has been pushed into schools uh, pre-2020, it's not what these the schools want to be taught. It's just for a long time, parents didn't feel like they could actually like say anything about it or most of them didn't even know what was going on. And so when the, yeah. when the stuff finally comes up, yes, you do, will get a natural reaction. Just like in, in other places that do agree with this, when this comes up, they fund it even more. There's differences in communities. It's as simple as that. There's really nothing to see here. Yes. I think at the end of the day, it comes down to not only a difference in opinion about the purpose of education, but also a difference in opinion about who has a right to weigh in on the education of children. And lately, it seems that there are many more people than I imagined who believe that, that that's not the job of a parent, <laughs> which is kind of, kind of absurd. Um, you guys are making me think of, I, I got to see Jonathan Hyde speak once. Um, he's a professor. I, I forget. I forget Harvard. which university. Is he at Harvard? Yeah. Really he's a, yeah. I, I love his book. I talk about his book, uh, The Righteous Mind, all the time. And I got to see him speak. He came to Georgetown, Texas. This is a few years ago. And he was talking about the two different ways of viewing education, like the purpose of education. And he said, he likes to think of them as, as the John Stuart Mill approach. That's what he was calling it. And he was saying, which is sort of where you view the purpose of education is to teach a child how to think and give them the tools to think. Mm -hmm. And he said, then there's this other sort of evolving way of looking at the purpose of education that, that he, he would, he called it the Marx view, but this view of that the purpose of education is for molding young people into activists, you know, to go out and change the world in some way. And that those are at opposite ends of the spectrum. And so the more I thought about that, the more I thought, okay, I, I agree with what he calls the John Stuart Mill approach. And, and it seems to me that if you agree with that, that idea that the purpose is to teach people how to think and give them the tools, so what are those tools? It's basic proficiency in reading writing, math, you know, the things that are going to help you succeed in life. Um, and so before you guys had the, the, uh, the big turnover in your school board in the last election and all the national news focused on you, I saw some stats about your school district. And uh, I remember that y you guys were looking at the academic accomplishments and the proficiency rates in, in reading and math and and it seemed that things had been on a downward trend. I know it hasn't been that long, but you've only put out one issue of GCISD News. But are there any successes that you can point to already that you feel are successes or things that at least um, are hopeful about turning some of those trends around? So one thing I'm pretty pr proud of this board is they created and implemented a scorecard. Uh, not just for the administration, but for themselves to see where our students are going, this, the success of their students' outcomes. And I've never seen anything like that in the previous sports. So that's something that I was really proud of. Another is uh, recently the school, uh, they started uh, purchasing a phonics-based uh, reading program. So if you can improve the literacy rates, the reading rates, starting with our youth and in, in elementary school. I mean, that's just, just going to help them going forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I think, um, it, like you were saying, right, it's, we've only 
pull out one issue since um, since this, this, the new board has been elected. Um, and so for most of the stuff, time will tell. And I think uh, it will take less time you know, rather than more time, but maybe by, by the next graduation or the next two gra- uh, graduating classes, you'll sort of get a trend of, you know, all the different improvements that's going on. But what you, what you get from this new board is at the very least is uh, an attitude change. Um, and essentially it's, you know, there's a downward trend here. Uh, what do we need to do uh, to fix it? But at the very same time, being able to chew gum, you know, walking chew gum at the same time, right? Uh, keeping your eye on the school spending, um, advocating at the state level for how much money is being taken out of your school district, because sure, you're more, aff- you're above average affluent um, uh, district, but you still have students that have that, you know, and parents that want a certain standard of education that costs some money, right? Uh, and that money has to come from somewhere. Um, and so, you know, if money is being taken out of your school district and put into other places, uh, you sort of want to be able to say, hey, maybe, you know, maybe we should put a pause on this or at the very least ask for more money from the state, um, as, you know, because some of that stuff hasn't been raised, uh, especially with, with inflation. And so you've got different stuff there. Um, active shooters and just uh, kid, uh, kid safety, right? Stuff like that. You've got people who've got some, we have people on the board right now who've had experience with, with situations like that. Um, and so they, they're able to bring that that um, that experience uh, to bear. And so I think overall, what you're going to see in the next two to five years is going to be an incredible trend, uh, upward trend. And if you don't, honestly, like this is the way communities tend to go, right? They'll, they'll go and it really won't matter what they believe as far as their ideologies. And I, I kind of wish more people um, understood this part, right? Mm-hmm. Um, this is sort of the way I, I wish more communities were like this, uh, but this is sort of the way uh, Northeast Sacramento County has been. Um, one of the points in, in like some people have spoken spoken about, about this in the past, right? You would get two people who either vote Republican or two people who call themselves conservatives, right? Running against each other. Um, some people may find that a bit puzzling, but it really is true because when you when you hear their debates, when you hear what what people are talking about, or when you listen to um, to to voters who are saying, "Yeah, I'm going to vote for that one instead of that one," they're pulling up the person's record, right? And they're pulling up the person's record on the board and what they've been able to do, um, as opposed to, "Oh yeah, that, well the person hasn't," you know, school boards the races are are nonpartisan, sure, but like you know, the person has voted Republican or the person seems conservative. It's like it, it goes a bit beyond that. So in two to five years. If you don't see any positive changes, yeah, you're going to see a completely different um, uh, attitude. From the, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. <laughs> you, you, you generally get a board between that time anyway, just because people turn out, but you'll get a different attitude from the community um, as far as what's working or what's not working and where changes need, need to be. And ultimately, that's the that's the biggest uh, litmus test. And so, yeah. I'm very excited about what's happening in Grapevine Colleyville um, and uh and I think it's pretty incredible that that concerned citizens are are you know taking the time to put together something like GCISD News. Um, what do you see? What do you think? Are you hopeful for the future of the school district? And then, could you speak? Would you mind speaking on a just as human beings, not necessarily as representatives of the board, but would you mind speaking about the country and where you see the country heading? Before before we started this interview, I was just telling Zary and I just saw this news item from uh, Portland, Oregon, and the Department of Education there had said they're going to um, get rid of all graduation <laughs> requirements for basic proficiency in math and and reading because it they said to to have those standards for being able to graduate would be harmful to communities of color. And so I see these two very different directions that we're heading, depending on what part of the country you're in. So what are your predictions and and what do you hope for the future of Grapevine Colleyville? And then if you wouldn't mind, tell me a little bit about you as a person, what do you think about what's going on in the country? So personally, this is from my real estate experience. I'm also a realtor. And the Great Wind Colleyville area is still a super hot place to live. People look for homes when they're moving out from California and New York. I have clients asking me, where is the best school district? And they, before even I'm suggesting that, they're already narrowing down to Great Wind and Colleyville. Okay. So I know the area is really well because they want to be in the schools that is advocating for parents. So I'm not worried about the future at all at GCISD. 
at least to me. What about the country? <laughs> Are you worried about the country? Or did you, you're like, that's not my concern. I'm looking at Texas. <laughs> I mean, there's a reason why so many people are moving to Texas. Yeah. And yeah. there might be issues across the country. I mean, but I don't see any issues right now with our state. Yeah. Um, on, sort of on, on what Zarin was talking about. So when my wife and I got married, we're living in Dallas, um, East Dallas, you know, very historical neighborhood. Um, and then, you know, as we sort of started looking across the Metroplex, um, you know, thought about having kids and all, those, all that stuff. There was one area that we targeted on the map, right? And that's Northeast Aaron County. Northeast Aaron County and Northwest uh, Dallas County. So Coppell, Irving, Grapevine, Keller, uh, South Lake, uh, those areas, right? And people in the Metroplex know, sort of know where to gravitate towards if they're about to have kids or they have kids. And apparently, um, a bit to our chagrin, people across the country also <laughs> also sort of know where to go. Um, and so as far as the future of the, of the, of the school district, um, it's going to be good. Um, now, this is sort of where me being a realist, right? Um, it's going to be good, but good could mean anything depending on what your standard is. And, and from the historical standards of, of GCISD, we needed to get back to being great. Um, and I think that's going to happen but I don't think it's going to happen with us just sitting on our hands, right? Um, both us as a board, as a newspaper, uh, but also just literally community members and, and parents, honestly. Um, at, at the end of the day, once a person gets elected, right, they've got certain certain incentives. And they need that, that fire to be lit under them at all times for them to do what they said they're going to do. And, you know, most of them are... At, at hopefully at the, at the local level, right, where you actually know where the person lives and the person goes to church with you, right, that you can check in on the person all the time. And, you know, you're elected to do this. How's that going? Right. All that stuff. So I, I from what I know about the, this community, just in the short time that I've been here and I've, I've loved every minute of it, they're phenomenal people. Um, I think that's going to happen, but it's going to, it's going to take work for that to happen. Um, as far as the country, whew. Um, <laughs> you don't have to step in it if you don't want to. <laughs> oh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm more than happy to. It's just I'm, I'm trying to to uh, put this in a very, uh, not a very, not a pessimistic light. So right. er, earlier when we were talking about sort of, you know, all these different changes that's happening uh, at the school board levels, right? And I was bringing up, you know, uh, Democrats and Muslim women in Virginia. Um, around the same time period, I think this was 2021, right? Uh, San Francisco. Left the old uh, San Francisco, right? They fired their school board members and elected a new school board. Now, right. sure, like they all voted the same way as before, but the new ones were less radical than the last ones, right? This isn't this isn't Montgomery County, Texas. It's it's San Francisco, right? And so, like you're you're seeing this thing, these things happen all across the country. Now, my suspicion, and I I think the 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 data will sort of bear this out that people are sort of self sorting based on safety of the state w where they live, uh, job opportunities and benefits to their kids, right? And so you see a bunch of people sort of leaving the top three states that people are migrating out of California, Illinois, New York, and the top three that they're, they're, or top two that they're going to is Florida and, and Texas, right? And so now if, if you know, people who tend to uh, go after conservatives or, or Republicans pay a bit more attention, you'll see that California isn't really the bastion of, of Republicanism, right? And so a bunch of people leaving there aren't really the staunchest Republicans, right? If Republicans at all, but they're coming to Republican states because I know this benefits their kids more. Um, and now, you know, all my Texans who want me to put this in, remember why you left when you were, where you left and keep voting that way. <laughs> <laughs> but but at, at the very least, I think you're, there's sort of this self-sorting across the country. So will it get better? I think it's going to get much, much better in certain parts of the country. And it's going to get, it's going to get worse or the same in other parts because this, this unfortunately, right. And it's very unfortunate for the people who live in this, in these areas, but there's a bit of a, a this hubris where you feel as if, um, there are certain people in, the, in this country who feel as if because their motives are pure, it doesn't matter what the facts are or what the results bear out, especially the results. It does not matter what the results bear out because they're, 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 their hearts are, are, are golden, right? The your Oregon case, the same thing has been happening in New York with uh, with um, advanced placement uh, education in uh, with high schools in New York. Right. So the stats bear out that that minority kids and, and black kids are doing the worst uh, in these specific um, uh, subjects or in all, all subjects. 
And so instead of increasing, you know, bringing better teachers, maybe increase the, the funding a little bit, uh, but add, add extra curriculum and really go after that, right? And try to get those kids up, up, up to standard. Your result is to lower the standards so the, so the numbers look better. That, well, that doesn't actually help anyone's life, that even if it makes you feel better. Yeah. yeah. And so unfortunately, I, I think you're, you'll see this for a while before it gets better. Um, will it change? I don't know. Because oftentimes the people who are likely to change it are also the ones who are likely to leave. To and leave. they, yeah. And so if you have the money to stay somewhere, to, to pick up and go somewhere, as opposed to staying and fighting, you know, not everyone's a firefighter, right? And some people, you know, they're more than happy to just pick up and, and move somewhere else. And that doesn't, that doesn't bode very well for the, for the current situation in, in their area. So t- yeah. time, will, time will tell, I want to say things will get better across the country because we need it as a country. Uh, kids in Texas who get great education are just as worthy of a great education as kids in, in LA, all right, or kids in San Francisco. Um, and, you know, this is, this is coming from, from um, those of us who always get accused of not, not respecting public education enough or wanting to support public education, uh, public education enough, right? Kids need this. This is super important. Um, and so we, we need everyone to kind of get their heads straight and be like, yeah, like, your, your models may be good, or you may think your models are good, but the results aren't really panning out. So maybe you should, you know, change a few things here and there, even if you don't, you don't necessarily change how you vote overall, or you don't call yourself a Republican or conservative or whatever, but your friends are leaving for a reason. So maybe that should give you a hint. So, but we'll see. Yeah. I, one of the, I just wanted to highlight one of the things you said there, which is that people vote uh, a lot of times based on motives. They just look at their motives. My motives are pure. I think we should enact this policy. I think it would help people, but they don't, uh, there seems to be a disconnect where they don't necessarily look at the results and say, Oh, did it, did it help in the way that I thought it would? And if it didn't, then let's not double down in that area. Let's, let's maybe vote for a different policy that would help, you know, that would fix Mm -hmm. this, this problem that we might've even made worse. And that's definitely my experience being someone who, um, spent some time. I did time in California. Uh, so my wife is from there, so you're not alone. Okay, I'm originally from South Carolina, I always like to make that clear, but (laughs) but I am a proud Texan now. I did my time in California in between, um, and uh, I, I, you know, as someone who is a cultural refugee who came to Texas, I also wanted to highlight your point that, um, that. What did you say? I have to get this in here for my my Texas friends who will say, make sure you remember why you're coming to Texas. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I always remember. I uh, I noticed. So I I know you've put out one issue of GCISD News, and I noticed that there are some uh, people, I, I guess, criticizing it is the kindest word I can use on Twitter. I spend too much time on Twitter, so I was just looking to see what was being said. Why do you think anyone uh, would have an axe to grind with a newspaper that whose purpose is to cover what's happening at, at school board meetings and what's happening in the schools? Um, what is the purpose of life? Um, <laughs> how do you solve the Middle East crisis? Um, <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, why, why people have issues with certain things, um, you know, everyone has their own reasons. I... I, I guess, honestly, I'll say this, to be fair to them, right, our, our personal beliefs aren't hidden, right? I am a conservative. Um, all three of us are to a certain extent. Um, the newspaper isn't necessarily, but the people who are writing it, you know, sort of are. Uh, we, do a very, we do our very best to come across as, as neutral as possible because we're talking to, you know, we're writing stuff to people across the district who don't to all agree with us. Yeah, and, and, we, and we keep that in mind and we're... Our, our really our point here is what we're saying is going to appeal to you whether you agree with us or not because we're not making this stuff up right like unless it's like a letter from the board right which you know we wrote like yes yeah, that's kind of, that's being made up everything else is just us telling you you know what happened at the school board meeting so you don't have to attend it or um but you are w- more than welcome to if you want to um but you know that's sort of it um i i think because Maybe they, they looked us up or maybe they didn't know that we don't agree with them politically uh, on, on everything. And so that's their issue. And so they, they think there's some sort of hidden vendetta uh, behind, you know, what we're trying to do. And I mean, for everyone out there, I'll tell you right now what we're trying to do. I'll lay it out right now. Our purpose here 
is to let you know if we think the school board is doing a good job or a bad job. And we like that most of the school board members, um, they're all great people, uh, but we're, we like most of them and we feel like generally they're going to be doing a good job. And so those are our biases. Um, and so, you know, if you're going to have an issue with us, I suppose it's, it will be on those bases. Uh, if, if it's anything else, I mean, yeah, I don't know. Um, they, yeah, I guess they could, uh, maybe some of them don't like my haircut. Um, they, I, I have, I do need one. So maybe it's that, you know, uh, <laughs> I mean, I honestly don't know. I mean, our first issue was pretty much all good news. We stated the facts, what's happening at our local level, what's happening at the state level. Heck, if people don't like it, like, make your own newspaper. I mean, you know how much time and effort it takes to put it together? Like, I'm not going to be worried about one, what one or two people say. Yeah. I, I like your answers. And Zarian, I love that you are – a person who says uh, I'm not I'm not a, paying attention to cultural war. What's on Twitter? I don't know. I need more people <laughs> like you in my life. <laughs> that, that's why we keep them around. <laughs> it's not Twitter. X. It's uh, I refuse. I refuse to. I can't. I'm a luddite at heart. <laughs> yeah. So I don't want to keep you guys too long. Um, I just. I just. I wanted to talk to you when I heard that that there was a, a group of uh, citizens who got together, created this board or putting out a newspaper about about what's happening in the schools and what's happening in the school board. I thought that's very interesting. Um, I think maybe more communities should follow your lead. And, you know, there's different ways to have an impact if you're a parent or someone who wants to be a parent. Um, you know, you can run for a school board election or you can say, hey, I'm going to. I'm going to become a citizen reporter or I'm going to start this paper and we're going to talk about what's happening in schools. So I think you're inspiring for people. You are for me for, as a Texan and, and maybe for people also across the country. Um, can you just tell people, we're going to have links below so everyone can find it, but if you are in the Grapevine Colville School District or if you're in another school district and you want to see what these guys are doing, where can they find a copy of uh, GCISD News? That'll be right on our website, gcisdnews.org. Cool. Any any final things you'd like to leave us with? Um, for those of you who are listening to this who aren't in Texas, um, and this is just a your, you know PSA reminder. This is still the best country in the best country in the world. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're the best country in the best country. We are, and uh, and we're, yeah, I mean, and the rest of us on this board, we're very happy to be living in, you know, not in Dallas, but in, in North Texas. Um, it's a great place to be. So we're living in the best area in the best country in the best country in the world. And this is this is an absolute pleasure for us. Uh, there's a reason why we do this for free. Um, and so, you know, this is we, this is what we feel is is worthwhile as far as how to impact, you know, the future of our kids um, in, a, in a better way. Right. Because uh, you can have, you know, a, a good and bad impact. And we really feel as if this is this would be a good service to all parents, those who agree with us politically, those who disagree with us, those who agree with us as far as, you know, how kids should be edu educated, those who disagree with us, right? Like, keep the schools uh, neutral on those con controversial issues. Get back to having, um, you know, a excellent standards on education, mm -hmm. and your kids will, will do well for it. And, um, and then, you know, you and I and all of us can discuss all our other disagreements later on, so long as our, you know, schools are being uh, are doing a great job and their kids are being properly educated. I, I could have said it better than Joel. Focus on education. Keep the schools um, keep the schools just focused on education. Keep the social values. Our parents teach that at home. And I would say that GCISD will be is probably a good role model for the rest of the schools in the state of Texas. And I'm proud to be a future, I'm proud to be a GCISD alumni and I'm proud, I'm excited for when my daughter goes to GCISD. Cool. Uh, well, thank you guys very much. I wanna, I'm gonna close with uh, a little bit of levity. This is a podcast so we can have a little bit of fun. Uh, if you were to, if you were in charge of coming up with a list of requirements for cultural refugees moving in from California or other states. As a Texan, <laughs> what would those requirements be and why would they involve uh, barbecue? I'm kidding. 
Oh, I can tell you why it shouldn't involve barbecue. Um, I'm, I'm happy to answer your question as is. Okay. I, I can let you go first or anything if you want to. Oh, man. Go all you go first. Okay. First and foremost, um, so in, in Texas, in seventh grade, you're, um, you do, or in eighth grade, you do Texas history. Um, so anyone coming in, I feel like when you go to get your driver's license, you know how you have to change it, right? Yeah. Um, or even your, your car registration. You should have to take a minimum two hour course on Texas history. Um, I <laughs> really feel like. <laughs> are you are you being serious though? I thought you were going to say on barbecue. <laughs> no, no barbecue. Okay. That part is a joke. But no, I'm 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 seventy five percent serious, right? I because okay. here, here's the cool thing about Texas. So you know politically, you know you've got your Republicans, your Democrats, or whatever, right? But this is the only state where the two sides would disagree on nearly everything except how great Texas is. They may disagree on what Texas is good at. They may disagree on what Texas needs to improve on, on right? But as far as like that lone star mentality, right, it, it goes across the board. Even people who weren't people like me, right, born in West Africa and grew up in Texas, right. I'm 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 red blooded Texan, and so part of that I think is 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 in part because of Texas history being taught in schools, and also just that 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 Texas mentality, right? Like we know we're better than everyone else, even if you don't want to admit it. Uh, <laughs> but it's not as rude as New York because we're still Southern, right? So, um, so yeah, so Texas history. Um, oh, I think everyone should be should have an have an option to say yes or no to shooting a weapon just because it's part of the culture here, right? You shouldn't have to be forced to, but you need to understand why, and also go through like a second amendment class, uh, half an hour or an hour, right? On the importance of it. You don't have to you know, shoot it yourself, but there's a reason why I'd say more than any other state, we value it so much here. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it goes beyond just the culture. Um, it, it's deeply rooted in the culture. I mean, the, you know, the, the gets in flag, for example, right? Um, and, you know, uh, come and take it. Like it's, it, it's deeply rooted in the, in the state's history, um, but it's also mentality. And it, it, yeah, Texas Democrats, right, were some of the staunchest, um, not all of them, but some of the staunchest Second Amendment uh, supporters in the country. Um, mm -hmm. So, and as far as the barbecue, Texas barbecue is different, man. It's it's different. I mean, I, I've, I've had Midwest barbecue. It's good. Uh, St. Louis barbecue is okay. Uh, California doesn't have barbecue, I'm sorry um it's 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 just different it's i mean when, when you have you have a nice piece of brisket right on your finger and like you're seeing it like it bends perfectly but it holds its shape but then you eat it and it melts in your mouth um whether it's dallas austin as crazy as austin is they can cook some good food san antonio has his own flavor on their on their brisket houston is just i wouldn't live in houston um but they do have good barbecue so good it's barbecue. it's yeah and it's a little bit different from the rest of the south i would say um just i think we put in more there's more of an expertise um in in our barbecue so it's i mean i could go on hours just talking about <laughs> on, I'm, on the values I'm, of being a texan but yeah <laughs> i'm originally from south carolina and our barbecue is very different and i have to say being a Texan, it's much better. You've got to try it. It's very different. Uh, South Carolina barbecue is more like shredded and it's a mustard based sauce. Mm -hmm. And North Carolina is like a vinegar. Anyway, Texas barbecue. I, I, I'm not saying everyone has to, but when I moved here, I did, maybe it's a coincidence, but I did end about 20 years of being a pescatarian uh, here in Texas. <laughs> by by eating some barbecue and then it was like okay now you're one of us yeah. um and yeah now i'm a i'm a proud meat eater i think it's um, the toughest to make i think it's yeah. it's one of the toughest barbecues to make so um don't don't go into it lightly it's a very serious business yeah um but if you do if you can learn to perfect it i'm, I'm still working on it but if you can learn to perfect it i mean it will be one of the greatest joys in your life it will be right there between before uh, or after being saved being married have your first kid perfecting brisket <laughs> you know, those orders may change a little bit but it's, it's somewhere there <laughs> well thank you guys so much for being here today um thanks for being open to letting me speak with you and i hope everyone if you if you like this interview if you like what's happening in grapevine colleyville school district please um check out gci isd news and you can find the links below and please consider sharing the video thank you both very much thanks y'all take care